and the bench. Clark? I like the Bulldogs here again. I mentioned Kyle Marshall, but how about Ronald Norad and Zach Hahn? Both have contributed mightily. The X factor always makes the difference in these games, it seems. I just like the matchup for Butler. I, I think they can defend UConn in the half court. UConn, not a three-point shooting team. Butler's half court defense will be terrific. And I would add the fact that core players from last year's national championship game team are in this one for Butler. Matt Howard, Shelvin Mack, even Sean Van Zandt have played in this game before, and that should be worth something. This game is brought to you in HDTV by LG. Life's good. Vern Harris, Doug Shouse, and John Cal. Mike Butler, and he's in the championship game. Is John Cal for the second straight year? Very impressive. Yes, it is. That is a huge honor. Yeah, it is big time. Big time, Steve. UConn in the white uniforms based off the better seed. And here we go. After a tournament worth of exciting games, here we are. It's time to settle the madness. And it lands in the hands of who else? Kimball Walker. Presented today with the Bob Cousy Award for the outstanding point guard in college basketball. And off the ground is picked up by Olander. It looked like it was going to be a turnover. And just as he did on Saturday, Olander gets the first basket of the game. Apparently another called play to go inside to Tyler. Well, they know they can pound Cutler inside like Florida did, like Pitt did. And we'll see if they can get Matt Howard in foul trouble. That would be huge. Those ended up being the only two points of the night for Olander. The shot blocked over to Van Zant. 12 on the shot clock. With the ball driving in. Good move. Off the glass. No. And it's Olander at the other end. Jeremy Lane started out defending Shelvin Mack that time, and his left led to a blocked shot. Beautiful penetration by Walker, but couldn't finish. Two on one for the Bulldogs. Mack takes it in oh. and off the front of the rim. Chased down by Van Zant. Perhaps the length of Lamb again bothering Mack. Stavall's got the three, and that's huge. He's been only one of 13 from three for the entire tournament, including 0 for 3 on Saturday, but he knocks down his first from behind the arc tonight. And Jim, so important for either Stagall or Zach Hahn to make a couple of those. And Hahn was the key the other night. Maybe it's Stagall tonight. Well, he's due, fellas. As Jim mentioned, he had only made one of 13 in the tournament, and he's a 35% three-point shooter coming into the tournament. Oriaki, Smith behind him. In the paint, puts it up. Yes, Alex Oriaki, the sophomore. Well, you see the strategy right away from UConn. They want to pound Butler inside. UConn's bigs are not necessarily scorers. In fact, Oriaki doesn't have a double-figure game yet in this tournament, but they're making an effort to score in the paint. Well, in the game the other night, they got 20 points and 20 rebounds from their front-court players, did UConn. Stuckall, can he do it a second time? No, wide left. And it's Walker pulling it down. Stutter step move and back out to Lamb for the reset. The freshman so smooth, gets free and long with the shot. Oriaki keeps it though for the Huskies. Now Walker. Pass fans and splits the defenders. Olander, jumper, no. Tapped out. Mack doing a good job of tapping it out where he could get it. Now driving on Walker, and again, he's missed a short shot. That's two. The length of UConn at the rim has bothered both of Mack's shots. Pull up, him, but no. Olander with another rebound. Walker, he'll take the three, and it rattles out. And that's on Olander, reaching around. Excellent box out that time by Shelvin Mack. Anytime a rebound hits the floor, somebody's got their body on somebody. That's exactly right. <laughs> and guys, we can see Butler's defensive strategy right away. They are sagging on the pick and rolls out top. Yep. They are not going to challenge Walker out on the three-point line. Their bigs are going to hedge but contain and try to hold off that penetration. And I like that strategy. I mean, make Kimba be a consistent three-point shooter. He's okay, but that's not the strength of his game. Good opening minutes by Olander, who goes to the bench, replaced by Niels Defy, the freshman out of Germany. And now Matt Howard has a chance to touch it, and it's blocked by Smith. Saved underneath. It was Roscoe Smith with the block, Andrew Smith with the save, and Stagall now one of three from outside. Good looks, though, all three of them, Jim. Lamb. 
And that dips down and out, and that's going to be Roscoe Smith of UConn called for that one. Already two excellent blockouts by Butler, leading the two over the back, well, on the back fouls by the Huskies. Now that's part of their defensive strategy every game. It's finish the possession by boxing out, no matter who you are. That time, he was to go. Butler's hit only one of eight here in the opening three and a half. You know, it's interesting, Jim. Butler is seven and eight in games where the Bulldogs have shot a lesser field goal percentage than their opponents, which points out their ability to win defending, rebounding, and winning the free throw game. Andrew Smith gives it up outside. Perimeter passing, sets up Howard. No, he missed all five from behind the arc on Saturday and misses his first tonight from out there. And I think it'll be important for him to make one or two in this game because Smith comes over for the block and Kendall Walker. And Andrew Smith sends that into the Butler student section. So we got a break in the action. Both teams a little shaky from the floor. Three of 18 combined. And Andrew Smith says, no way. Both teams with nine losses. In fact, when you look at Connecticut, 22 and 0 outside of the Big East. They were 9 and 9 in league play, but they know how to play on a neutral court. Yes, they having do. Swept through Maui, having that incredible five wins in five days at the Big East tournament to claim it. They hadn't won a Big East tournament game the five previous years, not one. They won five in five days. Boy, the two stars here struggling early. Well, Mack missed a couple of layups. He had a, his initial shot blocked by Jeremy Lamb. But then he missed two right at the rim. Oh, almost. Well, we, we heard Charles Barkley before the game say, if anybody gets to 70, they're going to win. I think if anybody gets to 60, that may be enough. <laughs> I mean, these two teams, neither one of them blows your socks off with their offensive That's right. numbers, but defensively, they're both really good. And they're efficient, typically, at the offensive end. There's Kemba Walker and short. You know, guys, he rolled that ankle, had that ankle rolled on in the game Saturday. Right, right there in that far corner. Exactly. Yep. Darius Miller rolled on him after as they were going for a loose ball and just watching him in warm-up And then watching him here in the first couple of minutes not nearly as explosive as we've Typically seen Walker good pass inside there. That's Holmes McDaniel just coming in missing the short shot How about three different rotations from the Butler defense? Yeah. Just incredible everybody on the same page every possession Ronald Norad into the game for the first time the guard, number five, in the far right corner. Connecticut now has missed its last eight shots. Howard, he needs a three, hasn't had one in Houston. Now he does. After missing his first six from Saturday through the first shot of tonight, he finally gets one to go, and he made 52 of them coming into this on the season. And that's huge, because UConn's bigs really don't want to stray from the hoop. If Howard can make a couple, it'll open up some of those driving lanes for Sheldon Mack and Van Zandt. Riaki gets the soft roll, and again, that was after eight straight misses by the Huskies. Nicely done by Oriaki. He got excellent position. Andrew Smith is going to have to fight him more to try to keep him from getting to the sweet spot on that low block. Mack from the wing. And he, too, can't get that first one to drop. Oriaki with an impressive board. Goodbye. Driving in and right to the basket. It's Niels Goodbye. Beautiful move with the left hand. He got a lot more minutes in that game against Kentucky than anyone expected. Didn't score, but were significant minutes. Eight, eight minutes total. Had a steal, a couple rebounds. Played pretty well. And Goodbye is a factor here. Well, so far, the front line of UConn enjoying an advantage inside. That is on Oriaki, and that's his first. You can follow all of the tournament action down Augusta Way by downloading the Masters app or go online to masters.com and listen to this to apply for 2012 Daily Masters tickets for the very first time just announced today as Van Zandt puts it up. Go to masters.com. Back out to NORAD. Kyle Marshall on the floor as well. He's had 22 offensive rebounds in five tournament games in only 89 minutes of play. Half the round, and Lamb able to outreach Howard for that board. And that's going to be critical. The offensive board for Connecticut, they've been a problem the last few games. Connecticut, Kentucky had 13, Arizona 16, mm -hmm. San Diego State 12, so UConn has to box out. Lamb chases it down. 
Numbers advantage now. Yep. Smith from the corner. No. A Juan Du turns around and puts it up too forcefully. It's Marshall with the rebound, which he does so well coming off the bench. Up ahead to Howard and eastbound by a Juan Du. Howard to the line. Guys, the experience of being on the floor last year in the national championship game, how much of a factor is that for Butler tonight as you look at this foul right here on Juan Du? I don't know if you can quantify it, Jim, but you certainly can qualify it. It is important because it gives you a sense of what it means to prepare for a game of this magnitude. And I think even more than that, the pain and disappointment of coming so close to getting the national championship has to serve you well in terms of your hunger and drive and at the end of the day it's got to be about execution but that psychologically has to be a plus for Butler. Olander back in for Connecticut for a Kwandu and Howard what well, we heard him say at the opening the movie the script it isn't over yet that's how he felt about it that near Hollywood finish of a year ago and back here they are Trying to get it tonight. Yeah, same movie. They just want a different ending. Walker on the board now with his first two of the night. Well, if they set that screen, excuse me, Steve, if they set that screen a little lower and try to go underneath it, he's going to be right in his wheelhouse because he's a 50% two-point shooter. And great point. That was the first adjustment that we've seen in this game. Jim Calhoun sliding that pick and, pick and roll down and Walker taking advantage. Zach Hahn on the floor for the Bulldogs. He had a big game against VCU. He sure did. An 8-0 run. It was huge. Howard. Long rebound to Walker. He takes it inside and draws the foul. He's heading to the line. And guys, those are the points that Butler just cannot afford to give us. Easy points in transition. And then a free throw coming for Walker. Now they can live with the jump shots in the half court. But if UConn gets enough easy hoops in transition and in second chance opportunities, then the Huskies are in great shape. That's the first foul of the game on Butler. And it goes against Howard. Defy sits. And coming back out is Combs McDaniel. Kimball Walker, who averaged 24 a game on the season. He had averaged 12 a game his first two years, which included a final four year and a big part of that team getting to Detroit in 09. 11 30 point efforts this year. And that's his 43rd free throw attempt in the tournament. That's five games plus eight minutes here today. Norad now will be going to the line. An experiment could change one genius's life forever. Don't miss a new Big Bang Theory Thursday. Only CBS. That's foul on Walker. Norad to the line, who was 0 for 5 from the field against the Rams of Virginia Commonwealth, and 0 2 from the line. So a couple here for the junior, who originally signed with Western Kentucky, coming out of Homewood, Alabama. But when Darren Horn left, he got out of his uh, letter, and Brad Stevens drove all the way down to make sure he was right there in person. Drove to Alabama to see him and sign him. And Norad's been a big contributor on these two final four teams. This one, he finally gets one to drop. Not a big score in high school, but Brad Stevens called his contacts. Every one of them said this kid is a leader and a defender, and you have to have him on your team. You see the impact he's had on this club the last couple of years. He's a winner. That's the word that describes yeah. him as well, Steve. Ball stripped away. That was Norad, who's so good at that. He's With terrific. Quick hands. Garrett Butcher on the floor right now, trying to set a little screen. Number 32 for Butler, and Andrew Smith unable to keep the handle. That was the first turnover of the game for either team. Jim Nance and Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr here in Houston championship night. Butler has not made a two. 0 for 6 from inside the arc. And look at points in the paint, guys. All UConn so far, fellas. They're dominating the action in the paint and the length of UConn bothering Butler around the rim so far. And Mack has to score for this team to win. We saw it against VCU tonight. The Rams did a great job defensively, but Mack single-handedly scoring whenever they needed a bucket. Zach Hahn whistled for that foul, battling for a rebound as the Huskies have brought in Shabazz Napier. And Walker was just on an extra couple of seconds out of that timeout. Now returns along with Combs McDaniel. 
Yeah, Walker is typically 24-7. That means he's open and going all night long. He plays about 39 I, minutes a game. I think he's played 40 minutes in yeah. three consecutive games, and a lot of people felt he was tired at the end of that uh, Kentucky game the other night. Howard back in for the Bulldogs for Butcher. You know, his fatigue in the late part of that Kentucky game could have been due to the unique circumstance that we had with not having the under eight timeout right. until that we was under four minutes. Walker trying to draw that second foul on Howard, and the leap and leaner is short. And the discipline of Howard so important because that's how Kemba Walker drew Derek Williams first foul in that Arizona game that pump fake and jumping into the defender important for Howard to maintain that defensive discipline hands and no and that's going to be on Andrew Smith with the reach around big time rebound by Oriaki Butler's missed its last five from the field and woeful 13 percent shooting and on cue, Shelvin Mack comes back into the ballgame. First on Smith, second on Butler. As I thought those two misses from Shelvin Mack early were important. And the then two missed, short ones. The two short ones. Then he missed a wide open three on a great uh, play that, that Butler executed. When he's off to that slow start, he's going to have to get into the groove. He's defending here on Napier. And a switch off. Mack almost made a little steal. Smith has it for three. He's long with it. And last tap, it looked like maybe it was Oriaki. They say Butler had a hand on it last. Jeremy Lamb returns for Smith. Take a look, the box out. And yeah, it looks like Mack. Yeah, it was yeah. Mack. He's got his hand all over that one. Uh, Utah's a little more athletic down there, and so uh, Butler's going to scrap and claw for every rebound. And we've already seen a few loose balls go out of bounds to Yukon's way. Not only are they a little more athletic, they're also a little taller mm -hmm. at just about every spot. Bounce it inside. Smith and falling on him and committing his second foul is Oriaki. That's also the sixth team foul, so from here on out, they'll be in the bonus. Tomorrow night, the Division I women's basketball champions will be crowned. Notre Dame and Texas A&M square off in the championship game. Pre-game coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the women's championship, go to NCAA.com. Well, I caught the whole Notre Dame game, and Skylar Diggins was fantastic. And I caught the tail end of the Texas A&M win. Terrific basketball yeah. in Indianapolis last night. Jump hook by Andrew Smith breaks a five-minute Butler drought and also gets the Butler Bulldogs on the board in the paint here in this first half. Napier, he is a nifty ball handler. He goes inside and Moran is going to be whistled for the foul as Walker was breaking on him. That's his first in the third on the Bulldogs. Well, I love the way UConn executes. Yeah. They are so efficient. They know exactly what they want to get. They lift the backside, dribble towards that guy on the wing, and if he's overplayed, he immediately back cuts. They've scored on that play a couple of times yeah. per game throughout the tournament. And with that said, a great play for Nora to yeah. just blow the play up That's and right. say, all right, go ahead, take the ball out of bounds. Danelle Beverly throws it in for the Huskies. The senior from Hawthorne, California, seeing his first minutes of the game. Defy. Wandu for a moment looked like he might have it for the Huskies and Max on the break. Max still has it and it's stripped away. Stripped away. Walker was right in the middle of things. And here he is off the save by Beverly. Lost the handle but will chase it back. So Max still can't get it going. Look at them contain Walker out top. On the floor. Defy and a tie up and the arrow's going the other way. Nothing easy either way. No, you got to bring your strong hat and your vice grips today. Good effort that time. Nice job by Howard to break contact and get around and get a hand on that ball. As Shabazz Napier comes back in. Beverly going to sit down. Amazing how often Butler recovers when it looks like UConn's got an yeah. advantage and they're going to score. Butler just flies to the ball and gets the right angle and keeps UConn from scoring. That's part of the persistence in their DNA. Um, Steve, I think yeah. they just don't give up. They play through 
possessions, and this is a big foul now because it sends Butler to the line for the rest of the half over the limit, and Butler should be able to cash in here. On Lamb, his first, and again, the seventh, so a one-on-one -on -one coming up. Mack has a chance to put a point up. All the castaways are going to Redemption Island, and what happens there will surprise and shock them. Don't miss a new Survivor Wednesday, only CBS. And does this get Shelvin Mack going? You know, you, you hate to send him to the free throw line if you're UConn, you've kept him away from a field goal to this point. And as you know, Bart, you give a scorer a chance to get an easy one, see the ball go through the hoop. How many times have we seen that happen oh, at all boy. levels of basketball? I bet you he makes his next jumper. You know, <laughs> would not be surprised if that's yeah. the case. Howard sits. Again, he's got only one foul so far. Hal Marshall in for him. And Mack, who was 8 of 11 from the field on Saturday and at 24 against VCU. He's got now just that one point for the night. Meanwhile, UConn's been scoreless for three and a half. Both of these teams are prone to droughts, and we've seen evidence of that already, but they are able to stay competitive because they defend and rebound. Oh, Wandu was set up, going up for the dunk, and his hands just let him down. Goodbye, fed him just right. Beautiful pass. Yeah, he just muffed it. Fortunate to get it back. 18 to shoot. Stolen. Stagall has it. Third Huskies turnover of the game. Boy, Napier making Max life miserable over there. He's an excellent on ball defender. Really good lateral quickness, and he's active with his hands. How good was he against Brandon Knight? The other night. Marshall Excellent. fakes the shot, drives baseline ah! off the front of the rim. Well, it's been a tough shooting night for the Bulldogs. They've been throwing them up there like day old dinner rolls. It's been, it's been really wide, right, and hard. And off the mark. And yet, with all that, yeah. you know, they're down one. Exactly. And, uh, exactly. You made the point earlier, Clark, and I heard Greg Anthony make a, a, a great call the other day. He said, Butler plays well when they're playing poorly. That's right. Better than anybody in the country. And they just find a way to stay in games. Norad back on the floor, as well as Beverly for UConn. And there is Lamb to the bench with his second foul. Oriaki well, has two, Jim. Lamb has two. So foul trouble becoming a story here as Butler struggling to score from the field. They're getting opportunities at the strike. They've split a pair, actually split four free throws since going into the bonus, getting into the bonus. Easy points for either team is so important here. You can see it's going to be an all-out war in the paint and in the half court. Both teams just struggling to find anything. You got Mac out. You got Howard out. The two primary scorers for Butler. Well, we saw them play pretty good basketball in the same scenario. Oh, it's the goal. Says, I'll be the one yep. to pick it up for us. His second three of the night. Well, you know it's a matter of time with Stagall, Jim. I mean, he's too good a shooter to continue to be almost bageled from the three-point line. He's from Newcastle, Indiana, the hometown of Steve Alford, who hit seven on the championship night back in 1987. Yeah, they take pride in shooting the basketball in Newcastle. Yes, they do. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Tough shot and on the floor with it is Marshall. He's trying to call a timeout, but they call the arrow first, the tie-up, and it's going to go back to Connecticut after the timeout. Stagall gets another one from deep. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by DirecTV. Here in Houston, Texas, hosting a Final Four in a championship since 1971. First time since 71. Mack and Howard are coming back out with 6.44 to go in the half in this uh, 
choppy, if you will, so far in the championship game. Both teams really struggling to, to find anything offensively. And how about UConn? They were one for 12 from the three-point line the other night. 0 for 4 tonight. Kimball Walker gets the jumper to go. But that's why I mentioned earlier, I, I like the matchup for Butler because UConn just does not have the ability to stretch that defense out. And Butler just so good with their rotations. And they don't have a lot of floor to cover with this matchup. Shot by Kemba Walker to force Mack one way or the other. Stick all short. And it's Roscoe Smith for the Huskies. Who lead it at 17-16. Kwandu back to Gafai. Stuck underneath. Ball squirts out to Beverly. Now there's unexpected yeah. production. Donnell Beverly. A cheap one. You know, just, just the ball bounced his way. And it, in this game, it may be decided by the, the bounce of the ball and who can get lucky a few times and get a point or a basket. Maybe it'll come down to another last-second launch. <laughs> We're in Space City, after all. Coming off of last year, who knows? Maybe another finish just like that. Power. Short with that one off the glass. Tough angle. Going against a taller defender there. Not a lot of second chances for Butler. No, but UConn doing a nice job on the defensive glass thus far. Doing a great job defensively, too. Yeah, covering out on those pick and rolls that Butler likes to run. And not getting that usual rhythm, getting the ball side to side. Over Norad and Walker. Not able to hit it from three. But again, Butler giving up a lot of size across the board and as a result even though they've boxed out well a couple of times UConn has been able to go over the top because of the size advantage and a hand check on the outside and it's on Marshall points in the paint because they're not hitting from the outside UConn that first two for the game yeah, it's been dining and eating for UConn taking it right inside and grubbing up big time. <laughs> you know, they hit only one of 12 from three on Saturday. That's right. Missed their last 11. They missed their last five. All yeah. five here tonight. So they haven't made one of their last 16. 0 for 16 going back to the semifinal game against Kentucky. No, well, they make fewer than six per game on the year. Yeah, it's not a, yeah, this is not, yeah, not yeah, a three point shooting. Yeah, it's not a big part of their menu. But again, also sometimes hard to shoot in a cavernous arena, yeah. too. Over the top and making the play is Van Zandt. Mack weaving through traffic. Lost it, but Smith is there. Mack. Yes, with a three. And that was his first jumper after getting his free throw earlier. You were right. And it's a big one. Uh, he has to score, I think, 15 to 18 points in this game for Butler to win. I mean, he, you see the difficulty that the Bulldogs are having trying to score in the half court. And Steve, he is best when he gets into a rhythm bounce into his three-point shot. Yes. He's okay on the catch and shoot. He's superb on the dribble and shoot. Van Zant collides with Gaffai, and that's his first. Six-team foul and a break in the action. to his left hand right here because when he's able to get the ball on the floor and dribble it into his shooting pocket he is fantastic you can see how comfortable he looked there how relaxed he was he loves to dribble that thing with the left hand right up into that shooting pocket and that may get him going Steven. Yeah. in a game like this it may me it may be about somebody knocking down two or three yeah. consecutive shots to get a get a rhythm going and again we see a, a play a broken play that leads to a hoop it yeah. seems like every basket tonight has come off of a crazy bounce in fact only three assists total for the whole game both in this sides. game combined on 14 field goals nothing's clean nothing yeah, just one assist so far in the game for UConn and that came from Beverly UConn trying and down and look out that's got to be close to five count and Norad Abel to jump up and force the theft. I think that's twice now that UConn has lost the ball on a baseline uh, yes. out of bounds play. That's right. 
And in the game the other night, they seemed to score every mm -hmm. time they had the ball inbounded. Oh, nice entry pass there. Howard, well defended. Ball tapped around, and Napier for UConn. And that's deflected. I think um, Matt Howard is going to have to try to turn and face what the Quan do out there on him. Much taller. He's not going to move him by backing into right. him. He's going to have to step out, turn and face, and try to use his quickness. And, and get fouled. Yeah, you know, exactly. The line. Teams are shooting a combined 28%. Again, it's not easy getting it in. Now, Norred is such a ball hawk. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Butler switches a lot on yeah. those out of bounds. They plays. sure do. They get very tough on you. Walker. Ball tapped around to Van Zant. Well, UConn went away from that pick and roll. Now they're just flattening out, seeing if Walker can go one on one. Well, he can get his shot off any time. You can see that. Matt. That one rattles out. Smith has it. He waits. No call. No call. And UConn with Walker. Butler fans are booing. Walker dumps it down low. And on the drive, he's called for the charge. Matt Howard stepped in. Jim Calhoun doesn't agree with it. It's his second. Excellent work by Andrew Smith to reel in this carom. That's all pumpkin, yeah. folks. No, no foul there. No call. And a great job by the officials to not anticipate that contact yeah. had been made. And then, Clark, how good is Butler's transition oh, defense? Phenomenal. Phenomenal, Steve. Incredible. UConn puts Walker on the bench with 2.40 to go in the half. Down with the two fouls. And Matt, back out to Norad. Ben Howard playing away from the basket now. 12 to shoot. Smith. Trying to get the baseline. And it's the other Smith. Smith on Smith and Roscoe of UConn makes the play. Did a nice job breaking contact and blocking that shot. Jim, you feel like this is the Steelers against the Ravens right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a football guy. I mean, wow. Well, what were we saying? Somebody said in the 70s, Charles did, then you guys suggested the 60s. I Maybe would, it's going to be the 50s. Say, I mean, let's keep moving it down. <laughs> Coming up, AT&T at the half with Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, Seth Davis, Kenny Smith, and Charles Barkley. Breakdown of the first half. They'll pick their best moments from the entire tournament. And the awarding of the Naismith Trophy presented by AT&T to the Player of the Year coming up on AT&T at the half. They were tied at 19 inside of two minutes. And Connecticut's gone scoreless for four and a half. Beverly tapped up a Quandu. No, and Andrew Smith clears it in traffic. UConn allowed a season low. Season best just 21 to Kentucky in the first half. And here's why. That defense with plays like that by Napier. Norad, though, is able to cut off the penetration. He tried to post up Napier with Mack, but a poor angle on that pass. Exactly. Defense! 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 Interesting lineup on the floor right now with Walker on the bench and Lamb out with two fouls, both of them. Those have been the offensive producers for UConn throughout this tournament. Find the shoot, and Smith drives in, and that's a charge. And you've got guys out there not accustomed to being primary scorers, and you saw evidence of what happens when that's the case. And that's the second on Roscoe Smith. That's a big call with Howard. Had it gone the other way, would have been his second. You know, UConn has, or uh, excuse me, Butler has a saying. They say taking charges is our version of block shots. And they're not a shot blocking team. They la average less than two per game. So the way they defend is sliding their feet, rotating, and taking charges. Roscoe Smith to the bench. Holmes McDaniel replaces him. Eight second differential here on the clocks. <laughs> And put up too strong, but right back out. They could save it for the final shot of the half. And they will. I like the execution, though. They got Smith on yeah. the smaller Coombs McDaniel. He just couldn't convert. Yeah, he rusted, I thought. Yeah. Five to go. Will Butler have the lead at halftime? Mack with a long range shot. Yes!
I talked about it earlier. If he can dribble to his left and get that ball into his right hand, he's deadly. He will hurt you from anywhere in the gym if he gets the rhythm bounce with the left hand. Mack is back. And Butler scores the last six of the half to go into the locker room up three. Let's go over to Tracy Wolfson. A huge three by Mack to take the lead, but still, still both teams struggled early offensively. How do you get that going in the second half? Uh, there's a reason we're both struggling offensively. Both teams are guarding hard. These kids want to win, and, and it may not be pretty offensively, but there's two teams playing as hard as possible, and it's a uh, it's going to be a grinder. It's going to be one of those games. Shelvin made a great shot, you know, but there's a lot of basketball left to be played. How have you been able to contain Kemba Walker so far to just seven points, three for 11 shooting? A lot of attention. A lot of attention. We're going to continue. we got to continue to do that. Um, he's a terrific player. They've got terrific players around him, and if we can clean up the glass a little bit better, which isn't our guy's fault. They were blocking out. They just were longer and got some tips. Then um, I like our chances. Thanks a lot, Jim. Well, he's right. It wasn't pretty, but it was intense. And there's more to come as we continue on championship night in Houston in a moment. AT&T at the half is sponsored by AT&T, the nation's fastest mobile broadband network. We're back in Houston where we've seen the lowest scoring first half in a championship game since 1946, Oklahoma State and North Carolina. How about it, Steve? Well, let's uh, talk, talk about that first half. Kimba Walker really struggled. And we talked about the fatigue maybe being a factor, the ankle as well. And then how about UConn's length? They really bothered uh, the Bulldogs on the inside, and that left the outside shooting the only reason they were able to stay in this thing. UConn, 14 points in the paint. They got a lot of bounces that went their way and the length and athleticism, some putbacks. And that's been the story here. It's been a choppy game, very hard defense being played. Second half coming up on CBS. Shelvin Mack with the biggest three at the horn in this stadium since Adam Vinatieri won <laughs> Super Bowl 38, New England over Carolina seven years ago. A lot of football references here in the yeah, first yeah, half. You guys brought it up, so it was uh, perhaps, who knows, in a game that's been anything but clean so far, but maybe that's a big boost that will carry over to the second half. What do you think? Yeah, we see what happens here. I think guys are going to make shots here in the second half. I really do. It won't pick up a lot, the pace, but I think there's going to be some shot making here in the second half. This game brought to you in HDTV by LG. Life's good. Well, the coaches are going to make adjustments at halftime. And I think if you're UConn, the guy you've got to look to is Jeremy Lamb. He was 0 for 2 in the first half, but he showed the ability to shoot over the top of this Butler defense. I think that's their best attack, is to go with Lamb off those screens rather than try to go at those high pick and rolls with Kemba Walker. The goal chases down his miss three. And again, Butler's only made two. One two-point shot. Oh, look at Stagall. He's got three of them. How about the that? Outside. How about that? You talk about an X factor. We talked about the experience of being in a championship game for some of these Butler players. Sometimes it's a yeah. guy who's been low profile, struggling a little bit, who emerges big. Lamb, who was not a factor in that first half, had two quick fouls. He'll be going to the line. Tomorrow, new case, new killer, new boss. Mark Harmon stars in a new episode of TV's number one drama, NCIS, tomorrow, only CBS. Sure. Gaulle with the foul, and Lamb at the line for two. The cool freshman just outside of the Atlanta area is where he's from. Olander in for Roscoe Smith. I think Jim Calhoun talking about not boxing out and coming up with that rebound, which led to the three-point shot. For Chase DeVall, it was an extra possession for Butler. So Lamb gets his first points of the night. He's been averaging 18 here in the tournament. He picked up those two quick fouls, and that took him out of the game. But you can bet that UConn 
He's going to look his way, try to get him going here. So often, though, when you get into early foul trouble sometimes, it disrupts your rhythm for the full game, and that's Andrew Smith with a bad cholesterol foul there. <laughs> that's one. The rebound was secured. No reason yeah. to go in there reaching in. Yeah. Back up and get ready to play defense. Guys 94 feet away from the goal. Connecticut without a field goal now. Going back to the first half. Seven minutes and 20 seconds. Walker over Van Zandt. And Walker comes out with a big first shot of the second half. Well, you see the adjustment Jim Calhoun has made. He's running Walker off screens. He's running Lamb off screens. And they're trying to attack from the baseline instead of the top of the key area. Takes away a lot of help when you isolate like that, Steve. That's if you're right. in the middle of the floor, the defenders can get a bead on you. And Lamb starting out defending Mack, and his length is a problem. Back out to Howard. Hoops it over, and three-point land no for Mack. And the length of Lamb yep. bothered Mack on that shot. Napier, has Smith, underneath, lost control, and Olander saves it. Feeds Lamb, and here comes Jeremy Lamb. Five out of the locker room for Lamb. Another offensive rebound for UConn. The length and athleticism has just been a nightmare for Butler. Puts Connecticut up 26-25. <laughs> Last seven to the Huskies. Mack. Stays with Butler. That's Mack's shot, though. First, they brought you real Coke taste and zero calories. Now, we're bringing you the most impressive NCAA experience known to fans. Get in the game at CokeZeroSocialArena.com. Roscoe Smith back on the floor after getting a chance to think about the mistake he made early. Smith backing in on Oriaki, who does not give up his ground. Oh, Napier mixed signals with Walker mm -hmm. and a turnover. Their eighth of the night. Yeah, they're trying that little backdoor play that we saw yeah. in the first half and a little miscommunication. But well played by Butler. Butler with one basket here in the first three minutes. That three by Stagall, and that is again Oriaki making a play on the defensive end. On the penetration, Butler has to be ready to kick that ball out because Connecticut's limp. It's too much at the rim yeah. for them to go through and over. So the penetration has to be with the idea of kicking it out to an open shooter. And the officials agree. No Husky touched it. So right back, turned over to Connecticut. The other idea, if you're, gonna, if you're not going to kick it out, can you shoot that mid-range shot? I don't think it's Norad's game, but Shelvin Mack can hit that little pull-up 15-footer at the foul line area. We'll see if he goes that route. Walker, jumper. Anna Smith boxing out at that end on Oriaki. Both of these teams so good in transition defense, Steve. Very rarely do you catch them off balance in that regard. Howard long with a three and off and running is Walker. Oh. The pass puts up the shot. Almost got it to go. He'll be at the line for a couple. Stagall with three threes on the night. Yeah, he's gotten some good looks, and he's knocked down, as you said, Jim, three of them. And the Bulldogs have needed every one of them. He's an outstanding shooter, struggling in the tournament until tonight. Yeah, one of 13 in yep. the tournament before tonight from three. That's the second foul on Howard. Walker at the line. Kimball Walker again presented with the Bob Cousy Award earlier today. First team All-America. Aquandu in for Oriaki. Walker, just an amazing talent. Going to graduate on May the 8th in three years at Connecticut. May the 8th. May be there with a championship trophy, possibly an MLP award. 
but he'll also on that day be celebrating his 21st birthday. And when I talked to him about it last week up at campus, he said, don't forget, it's also Mother's Day, May the 8th. That's Matt, floater, no, but gets it back. Snaps it corner, Stagall fakes the three, drives on Walker, and that's rejected. Stagall, though, alertly taps it to Norad. And the Huskies are whistled for this one. It's called on a Quandu. Jeremy Lamb with five points in the half for the Huskies who lead by two. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by DirecTV. Jim Nance, Steve Kerr, Clark Kellogg here in Houston. Butler's missed its last eight shots. Jim Calhoun at 68. If he wins this, he'd be the oldest national championship winner from the bench in the history of the championship. Older than Frog Allen at 66. And his wife, Pat, looking on. She's surrounded by her two sons, James and Jeffrey, and their six grandchildren tonight. And there's Brad Stevens, who is half Calhoun's age at 34. <laughs> with his wife, Tracy, and she's got in her arms there her little girl, Kinsley, and Brady is close by. <laughs> Norad at the line, off a foul by Aquandu, going to the break, which was his second. And Jim, I think every family member is hoping that somebody can make a shot out here. <laughs> Actually, point. it's been mildly better to start the second half. That's not saying a lot. Uh, seven for 37 overall for Butler, which is just shocking. And yet they're only down one because UConn's 11 for 35. This ugly shooting, is it just the setting? Is it the night? Is it the great defense? All Why, the Why is it like All of that? the above. All of the above, Jim. It's always difficult as you look at the shooting. First half, second half for Butler. When you take a look at the fact that some good shots have been missed, a number of shots have been challenged, and there's Alex Oriaki getting one from point blank range. Oriaki, just a sophomore, who committed to Connecticut, entering his sophomore year of high school. His dad wanted him to play for Jim Calhoun. And quite honestly, I don't think the game has been poorly played. The shot making has just been dismal. There haven't been a ton of turnovers. There haven't been a bunch of bad plays, just missed shots. Morad with another miss. And swiped away by Walker. He's one on two, but he's going to challenge. Puts it off the glass. No, long rebound comes out to Van Zandt. He wants to run with it, and he almost got his pocket pick by Walker. There's Mack. Pull up three long. And Kimba saves it to Oriaki. That's a stretch right there at both ends that typify the way this game has been going. Wild scrambles, missed shots. And taking some chances to try to score because it's so difficult in the half court. Right. I think that's something that both teams need to try to pursue a little more, Steve. Push that thing up and see if they can get something easy in transition. And Norad is going to be called for the foul. Beginning Thursday, CBS Sports again proudly presents a tradition unlike any other, the Masters from historic Augusta National. And Phil will be going in off of a win here in Houston yesterday, winner by three. Masters live streams live video from Amen Corner 15 and 16 and featured group. Go to cbssports.com slash masters and masters.com. Norad with his second foul, and Kyle Marshall has come onto the floor. For Butler, he gave them huge minutes against BCU at 6.9 rebounds. Outside, Oriaki. And scrappy play by Van Zant this time. Max snaps it up ahead. Here's Marshall coming in on Oriaki. Pulls up and it rolls out. And it's Norad saying, I'll bring it back out. Butler has missed its last 11 shots. Mack able to come back out with it. That pass stolen. Lamb on his way. Well, Jim, it's only a five-point lead, but it feels like more because of the way the game is going, and I think Brad Steven feels that way, too. He's getting a timeout here. UConn taking a little bit of control in this game. You see the score, UConn up five, but look at this difference here. 
A huge advantage points in the paint, but the shooting has been more like watching paint dry. <laughs> I mean, it's just been that's brutal. Not, that's not fair to paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been tough. But look at the numbers, 7 for 41 for Butler. You ever seen anything like that in Never your life? Never seen anything like it. And in, so 6 for 22 from the three-point line. So that means they're 1 for 19 from two-point range. A lot of those have been blocked or challenged or changed inside. And finally, Howard with a tough shooting break. That ball was down and out, but the woes continue. And I feel like UConn has found a couple of things here offensively, running these baseline screens for Lamb and Walker, and then going inside to Oriaki a couple of times as well. Lamb gets it right back. Left open, baseliner, and Jeremy Lamb. He has really stepped on the gas pedal, hasn't he? He's been up. Half. Yes, indeed. Lamb with nine. In the second half, meanwhile, Butler at this end, approaching seven minutes without a basket. Since that Stagall three coming out, Norad gives it up. And Marshall almost got that one to drop, but he'll shoot a couple. Huskies now up seven, largest lead of the night. And Jeremy Lamb's been in the middle of a walker with the pull-up jumper there, but there's Jeremy Lamb, the poise, hammer-like freshman, smooth. And lethal in his attack. He's the one guy that Brad Stevens doesn't really have an answer for. Mm -hmm. Even Kemba, they can guard because yeah. of their ability to corral with their bigs on those high pick and rolls and the penetration. But when they run Lamb off those screens, he can shoot right over the right top over of the those top of whoever's yards. defended him. Yep. Here comes DeGaulle, who's the only guy who's had any semblance of a decent shooting night for Butler thus far. And Mack to steal a little extra time before the break under 12. That foul was on Gafai. And Marshall misses them both. Tapped out to Walker, but through the hands of Gafai. Well, the break for Butler there. Let's see if they can cash in. Jim Calhoun going to make a sub. And I think it's Roscoe Smith coming in. Yep, the starter Gaffai. coming back in for Gafai. Buck, you mentioned early the importance of Matt Howard being able to pick and pop and make a, a couple of threes uh, to open up this defense. It just hasn't happened. There's a two-point basket. Sean Van Zandt. Blue two. With a little wink, did I see that? <laughs> <laughs> Saying, guys, Come on, don't now. give up yet. Oh, you don't have to worry about that, Jim. You know they'll fight right until the finish with the Bulldogs. That has uh, ended a stretch. It was a 14-to-1 run by the Huskies in seven minutes between baskets. Lamb feeling it, but not that time. Taya Van Zant comes crashing in sometimes and makes some really great plays down low for a six-footer. Here he is. This time, though, that six-foot stature is exposed. Yep. Blocked by Roscoe Smith. Up ahead, Napier challenging Marshall. And Napier will shoot a couple. The dogfight continues in Houston. Listen to this paradox before Shaka Smart's magical run to the final for the biggest NCAA tournament moment ever for VCU came from Rolando Lamb back in 84 at the buzzer to beat Northeastern and take them to the Sweet 16. Rolando Lamb, the father of Jeremy Lamb and Rolando knocking out Jim Calhoun's team. Yeah. He was on the bench for Northeastern and when he went to recruit Jeremy, he said to the dad, you owe me one, okay? <laughs> Still the record, by the way, for the highest field goal percentage by a team in a tournament game in a losing cause. Yeah. Jim's Northeastern team shot 74% and lost. How about that? But he got the kid yeah. who has outscored Butler in this half on his own, 9-6. to six. Well, the way things are going, maybe we'll have the lowest field goal percentage on a winning team. Yeah, that's good <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I like it. No, we're headed that direction for sure. <laughs> Butler has to get away to make a shot. They've got to knock down a shot because this thing feels like you said, Steve, a moment ago, feels like a much larger cushion for Connecticut here. We've seen Butler stay the course and be able to stay within its, its style and its pace of play, but shot making has to take place if Butler's not going to lose control of this. The two free throws by Napier. Ups the lead back to seven. And you would think UConn is 
looking to seize the moment here. Quick foul call away from the ball. Roscoe Smith, who has four blocks, but that's his third foul. And team foul three on the Huskies. Gafai comes in for him. Well, you get the feeling it's got to be Shelvin Mack, don't you? Just the way this game is going. Shelvin Mack, but also Stegall, if he can knock down the three yeah. or two. He's been pretty consistent back there. Van Zant on the mid-range mid -range jump shot if he gets a good look. Guys, Howard and Mack combined are three for 20. Over the top, Smith got caught underneath. Here he is, Stegall. He hits back to the rim. And again, it's Lamb making the play. Well executed and a good look. Yeah. Everything but the period at the end of the sentence. And this is where UConn can really exploit its advantage with Lamb trying to beat the ball. It's the goal. Napier to Lamb for two more. What an adjustment from Jim Calhoun at halftime. We haven't seen one high pick and roll. Nope. We haven't seen a side pick and roll. It's been all baseline screens and sending shooters off of screens to combat that great Butler defense. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Bounce pass inside. Andrew Smith left hand short. He had an open shot. Then commits the foul. One of those nights for Butler. And I'll tell you what happens when you have nine shots blocked. That's right. At this point, you start thinking about it. No question about it. You're always looking for those long arms yeah. coming up to bother your shot attempt. Zach Hahn comes in. He had an eight-point run of his own on Saturday against the Rams of VCU. But this game now at nine with ten and a half to play. And Butler's defense continue to scratch and claw while they're considering they're overmatched. Yeah, particularly dealing with Jeremy Lamb. And the front line of UConn has had its way as well. Lamb with Han defending. Bounce pass. Walker oh, lays it up and it goes. Beautiful, Beautiful finish by the little fella Kimball Walker. And a timeout, Brad Stevens. This matches Butler's largest deficit of the entire tournament. They did come back from 11 down to Florida to win, but UConn is on a roll, a finger roll. Only CBS is America's most watched network. Thank you for making us your choice. For the best in television, these two finalists both opened up the tournament at the same site. They both were in Washington, D.C., and in oddity, they both stayed in the same hotel mm -hmm. for the better part of a week. Got a chance to know them in passing one another a little bit, but these two programs have never met in history until tonight. For all the chips here in the championship game, down low, it is Howard, and that one also rolls off the front of the rim. Cannot convert from up close. And they got another well-executed play and got the ball right where they wanted it and just didn't finish. They just can't deal with the length. And yeah. I'm actually surprised because, I mean, they played Florida last week. Florida very athletic on the front line. Pitt as well a couple weeks back. You know, Butler's used to going against I think it's just an off there. night. I really do. I mean, Connecticut, you got to give credit to the defensive effort. But shots are being missed not solely because of the length and shot blocking. There have been some open shots, some easy layup attempts yes. that have been missed. Napier reaching in. Whistle for that one, his first. You may have seen the graphic again a moment ago. No points in the paint for the night. Never, I've never seen anything like it. No, I mean, it's, it you know, it's a first for me as well. Championship game or not. But certainly in the title game. Nine minutes to play. Howard spins, kicks it back out. Felt the pressure. Van Zant along with the shot. All oh, UConn for that rebound. Good five. And the length, not only a problem inside, but out. Is and well. they close out. They challenge three-point yeah. shooting. You get a couple blocked, and now they've had a lot of them blocked. But you start to really think about it, don't you? The yeah. rim looks smaller and smaller. Last touch by Butler. Been a tough night for the Bulldogs. Short, long, right, left, layup. 
second half shooting. There it is. Two for 21. That's after shooting 22% in the first half and leading. And I think Stegall made the first shot of the second half, did he not? He made a three coming out of the break to put Butler up. He did. Yeah, that's right. You're right, Steve. Yep. Pass inbounds and Van Zant's the one who climbs up to tip it away, force the turnover. It's the third turnover off the out of bounds yep. on the baseline. Van Zant with a three. No. And it's out to Lamb. Eight for 49 for the game. Inexplicable. His own defense here now by Butler. That one, no, oh, it almost went in. Walker shot from the corner, got two players down. Up ahead, Norad, quick pass, Smith underneath. Ah! Underneath the cylinder, can't make that one. Well, he never knew where he was and was completely out of control, yeah. so that wasn't even a good shot attempt there. Unlike some of the other ones they've missed. That had no chance. Yaki bangs home the baseliner. I'll tell you what, you mentioned the zone, Clark. I have never seen Butler play zone. This almost feels like the white flag, like we don't know what else to do right now. Well, when you're not making shots, when you try to figure out something at the defensive end, Steve. Yep. Howard three-point shot. Dips down and out. Shooting 15% for the game as a team. As anemic as it gets, or as you've ever seen yeah, yeah. Oh, without at any level. Well, I mean, we knew this was a historic Final Four when we got here. No number one or number two seeds. This is historic the other way in terms of shooting performance. Hey, yeah, you got to give UConn's, we keep talking about the poor shooting, but the defense, Napier is off on that. No, and it's Howard who pulls it down. I don't want to overcredit the defense, though. There have been shots missed that are good shots. And it's not all just the defense. I mean, open shots have been missed. The defense has been part of it. What the fuck? Norad, look at this. Now they got a three on two. From behind, Walker chasing him. Matt, maybe he'll get him going right here. No. And Smith converts on the putback. Finally. And what a horrible decision at the other end by Napier. A 35-foot bounce pass on a three on two. And that's what led to that easy bucket at the other end. They had gone seven minutes before their last basket, and this was a six-and-a-half-minute stretch between hoops. And a foul on Mack. Basket by Oriaki. And we have a break in the action. UConn, 549 from the title, perhaps. They have defended. They have protected. And they have Walker, Texas Ranger. Jim Clark and Steve back here in Houston. This is what we alluded to a short while ago, second half. Those two droughts with one field goal in between. One and 13 minutes plus. And in this second half, guys, Mack and Howard scoreless. The two big guns for the Bulldogs. Unparalleled ineptitude is all I can think of. I mean, they've gotten shots. UConn's defense has been good, guys. But they have missed shots that they normally make and should be making. And for whatever reason, yeah. they're not finding the bottom of the basket tonight. And I feel like... Butler uncharacteristically, uncharacteristically, excuse me, may have panicked a little bit here with this trapping zone defense. Uh -huh. That's not who they are. And I thought their defense was fine. And maybe they were trying to force some turnovers. Yeah, trying to create some And they also were struggling dealing with Lamb. So maybe that, that, that was a problem. Yeah. But you see what's happened since they've gone yeah. to the zone. UConn's picked it apart. And yeah. now all of a sudden they have a ton of confidence. Boriaki at the line for one. Both of his parents were born in Nigeria. I remember mentioning his dad wanted him to play for UConn because he liked Jim Calhoun and he loved the way Emeka Okafor was coached and how he did in his academics graduating in three years Calhoun came to Houston and got Okafor right out of this area about five miles from the stadium here Hopkins on the floor for Butler Smith, jump hook no and Howard has it knocked out by Walker stays with the Bulldogs 
The second half, remember, was a three-point lead at the intermission. Bulldogs on top. Oh. And then the Huskies got it going. Kimba Walker, Jeremy Lamb, Oriaka sprinkled in, but they made some shots. While Butler has continued to go through major droughts, and finally, Matt Howard able to draw a foul. Tell you, the other thing that's happened is you know, throughout this game, UConn has been able to guard Howard and Smith one on one on the block. They haven't had to send any help from the perimeter. And so that's let the UConn perimeter defenders really challenge the three point shot. And there's just been no holes in this defense. Howard to shoot two. He's made more free throws than any player in Butler history. He broke the record that belonged to Bobby Plum of Hoosiers fame, That's Milan right. High School fame, the man who hit the winning shot, which was, of course, later brought to life in the movie Hoosiers. Plump was a Butler Bulldog after his days at Milan, and there is the parents, Mr. and Mrs. Howard. Nine of the ten kids here in Houston, leaving Matt on the floor. With the community up in Connersville, Indiana, all chipping in to bring the family here. Walker gives it up, and it's still five blocks, and out of bounds stays with the Huskies. Butler inverted its zone that time, putting Howard at the top, yeah. trying to get more size to mm -hmm. bother the shooters and the passers, but that allowed Gaffey to get one-on-one -on -one coverage with Mack, but uh, UConn unable to convert. Well, you see a lot of holes. We've seen a couple of holes because, again, to your point, Steve, Butler has not typically played this kind of defense. It's just not who they are. Yep. Look at that body control by Shabazz Napier. Napier's brother, Will Blaylock, who played in the tournament for Iowa State, is watching this game in the middle of the night over in Greece where he's playing ball been Skyping his younger brother during the tournament to keep up with him. Encourage him. Outside Van Zandt. He's got an open three, and he hits it. Napier made a mistake there, guys. Again, Jim Calhoun is yeah. staring at his coach and saying, what was he doing? Yeah, overhelped, didn't he? Overhelped and then did not challenge on the shot. Right. Might be too little, too late. I think UConn has to continue to attack those deep. You don't want to go into prevent offense here. Hopkins on Napier, kicks it back out, Lamb. They break an ankle, Korea, and you try to defend him. Those moves, we've seen that before, not this time with the shot. One of the great plays of the year, winning a Big East game with a move like that at the end. Big East tournament game. Now we're driving in, and he thought he might get a foul call, no call. And Oriaki, now he's been a big physical oh, no presence. They can't it, get past him. You know, the other day during the semifinals, I made the point that this is not the Emeka Okafor or Machine to Beat type shot blocking team, but tonight they sure look like it. And they are athletic and long and you know, bothering Butler on every shot. To beat another talent that came out of Houston. So Calhoun's come down here, picked up a couple of gems, both of them got to go to the final four. Calhoun has picked them up from all over the place. Yeah, but two big men out of Houston, and now he's looking for a big win. A third national championship if they can hold on here, the final 317. So Hopkins on the foul. Connecticut has 10 block shots, which ties the championship record. and crime in one direction and the bright lights of Broadway in the other. The first time I touched a piano, I knew which way I was headed. I poured my heart into every note of Empire State of Mind until it sounded perfect. And it kills me that people might not get to hear it the same way. HP TouchSmart with the Intel Core processor and Beats Audio. Hear music the way the artist intended. Only on HP. Everybody on. This is a chicken tender, an all-new chicken tender from Burger King. Completely customizable, amazingly portable. It's this year's tastiest BK handheld. The all-new chicken tenders. Experience the four-piece for just a dollar, only at Burger King. The 
the best picture of the year is now rated PG-13. Makes it official then. Today, share the inspiration. Splendid, Papa. With your whole family. It's actually quite good fun. The King's Speech, rated PG-13. Well, this year our garden is simply amazing. How did you do it? <laughs> Takes a lot of love. The real difference is this year we went to Lowe's. Well, all our Lowe's Garden Club select plants are grown for your local region and selected for peak performance. We get new plants delivered throughout the week, and we guarantee our plants and flowers for one whole year. And nobody beats our prices. Nobody. So it wasn't me? Oh, well, you provided the love. Experience. Lowe's. Let's build something together. Lowe's is a proud corporate partner of the NCAA and sponsor of the Senior Class Award. Wednesday, all the castaways are going to Redemption Island for a shocker. We are merged. Now the scrambling begins. I gotta go for broke. He's playing both sides. There's a division between us. This is a whole new game now. And one more thing. The winner will go back in the game. New Survivor Wednesday, only CBS. Symbol known around the world is coveted by all golfers. It's a pretty special thing. A tradition unlike any other. The Masters on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's National Championship game is sponsored by the Capital One Venture Car, the Lexus CT Hybrid, LG, and by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Here's a look at the Capital One Cup impact performance. With Lamb, 11, all in the second half. Really a difference maker. Well, Jim Butler came into this game shooting 44% from the floor on the season. Gafai makes the first. And there's one former Husky. Many of them have come back for this. Daniel Marshall watching. One of the all-time greats to play for Jim Calhoun. He averaged 26 a game, I think, his, uh, yeah. his senior year. He was unbelievable. Yeah, he was terrific. And this has been an impressive defensive showing by the Huskies and a night to forget for the Butler Bulldogs as far as shooting the ball goes. John. It's Oriaki, who, by the way, you can't underestimate that performance by Oriaki on the inside. Now with 11 points, 11 rebounds, and four of the 10 blocks, which, again, the blocks went away from having the record all alone. Yeah, he's been superb. By You're a right, team. Jim. Yep, he has. He's totally dominated the Howard matchup, which uh, I know you and I didn't expect. We checked that left box. Oh, yeah, we did. At the beginning of the game. We thought Matt Howard would yeah. be able to have his way, but Oriaki... Much the better tonight. Maybe the best on the floor tonight as Napier puts up the 3-0. No. And Gafai comes and fights for it and quick hands by Van Zant. Nice closeout by Napier there. Hopkins to Howard. Zahn. Open three way short Van Zant. He's going to stay with the Bulldogs. We start talking about the UConn players. You know, Lamb's had the big second half. Kimba's five out of 19 for the night with 12 points and nine rebounds for Walker. As Howard is limping. Well, they didn't need much offense, obviously, tonight. I mean, they're shooting 35%. They got just enough in the second half. Those first five, six minutes, the way they attacked, exactly. kind of changed the game. Sure did. Two minutes to go. Step back, three, yes, Matt. Brings it to 10. His first points of the second half come with two minutes to play. Just take care of the ball. You don't even need to shoot. Yep, that's right. Squeeze the orange, space the floor. Zahn's foul will send Lamb to the line. Lowest field goal percentage. In a championship game, Washington State, 1941. Wow. In the final. years ago. Lamb, and we get another one. It was Washington State against Wisconsin. And Wisconsin won the title at 39-34. We talked about Jeremy's father is now 
Howard is going to be taken out of the game by the officials because he's got blood on him. And has to be addressed. NORAD will replace him. I was asking Jeremy last week about his father. What does he do for a living now? He hit that big shot back in college. He's a character coach. He's a motivational speaker. That's his full-time work. And his main theme is usually the A game. He talks about attitude, academics, and athletics. And his son came into that locker room with the A game, didn't he? After half time, Mack hits a three. So hold on a minute with 139 to play. Trims it to eight. Nearly a steal. And then nearly a tackle. Yeah, that was close. Yeah, I mean, that was a cool. dangerous pass it for really Napier. Was. It really was there, Steve. Norris took a shot to the mouth as he came in there. There it is right there. Oh, he got an elbow from Kemba Walker. Two shots the rest of the way. Right there in the kisser. Well, those were the two shots Mac needed to make earlier a when long things time were getting ago. out of control. Yep. Before this thing got in the comfort zone for UConn. And they were the ones he made against Pitt and against Florida and against VCU. I mean, he's done it this entire tournament, but Mac just couldn't pull off the miracle tonight. Well, we have the first one to 50 with a 131 to play. There you go. <laughs> Gets them both, and his mother, Andrew, turns around with the rest of the family and wondering if they can go ahead and escape the last 130. Certainly, all signs look good for the Huskies as Mack nearly has it stolen. Ram rep defense most of the night by UConn. Van Zandt, no. Outside the Napier. He doesn't need to take off with it, and he'll come back out. Wise for the freshman who tosses it over to Walker with a minute to play. Walker sees a scene but comes back out. A Husky team that in desperate games goes undefeated on the year. Open with that run in Maui and they finish finding paradise here in Houston it looks like. They win the Maui Invitational. They go five for five at the Big East five days. And in the six game run through the NCAAs. It's amazing stuff. Back out to Lamb. It sure is, Jim. When you look at it in that context, and there's Jim Calhoun. He knows it's done now. It's just a matter of 30 seconds. His wife Pat. This team has given him one of his greatest joys as a coach. No question. He'll even tell you. Yep. It's been a thrill beyond compare. This is a coach that had already won two titles before tonight. His last one also coming here in Texas over in San Antonio in 04. His first was in St. Petersburg in 99. And he's now going to have three yeah. since 99. No other coach can say that. That's right. You know, Donovan had two. Krzyzewski since then has had two. And but how about the company? That he sits in now sure. with all coaches, time three. All time At least with three. three titles. John Wooden, Adolph Rupp, Co Coach K with Coach four, K with Mike four. Krzyzewski, Bobby Knight. Bob Knight, Bobby Knight. three. Yep. Howard puts up the three. It's back out to Mac. I don't know. The Cinderella run for Butler. It wouldn't have been the biggest upset maybe in the championship game, but it would have been the biggest Cinderella championship story mm -hmm. had they won this tonight. I agree with that, they, Jim. They thought the script, they thought it would be complete tonight. They would have their Hollywood finish that began a year ago at home in Indianapolis, six miles from their campus. But instead, the Huskies shut them down in the second half here in Houston. And the Huskies are the top dog in 2011.
for Jim Calhoun. It has not been an easy year. His best friend Bobby Samuelson, his old roommate in college, best of friends for over 40 years. He lost him, lost a sister-in-law. He's been battling cancer on and off for years. He's clean now. He and his wife, Pat, have opened up a cancer wing at a hospital up there. Great to the community. Adds to his incredible record with a third championship tonight. Everybody talked about the dog fight coming in, right? right. Huskies and Bulldogs. But one thing was very clear tonight here in Houston. Connecticut wins best in show.